Hey, do you have a situation where you need to create a two level data validation? Uh, for example, something like state and city or department and employee or even a project and an activity. The challenge with creating such a two level structure in data validation is that uh, you either end up making two data validation options that is you pick a state and then you will select the cities within that or uh, you would end up uh, creating something that's a bit clumsy. So in this video I will show you a real simple excel trick using which we can create uh, such a two level data validation option uh, especially useful if you care about just picking the second level item for example all you want is your customer or your end user to pick the city uh, but you want to provide the context of which states are available so that they can easily make an informed decision uh, then this trick will be useful to you my name is chendu and welcome to chendu.org on youtube let's get into the excel file so that i can show you this trick and explain how it works so here is our two level data validation workbook i will first demonstrate this concept um, we have currently picked a state we are only supposed to select a city so if i go and pick um, one of the cities then it will all right uh, and I can pick and you could see that this data validation gives me a clear hierarchy of what states are available and um, what are the cities uh, that we can pick and I can pick any particular city. As long as I'm picking the city, the data validation will be okay. But if I pick a state, then I will, I'm using Excel formulas and conditional formatting to show a simple error message to tell that, uh, you know, the user has not picked a city. So how does this really work? Well, in order for this to work, we will be using some very, very simple Excel concepts, simple formulas, a pivot table and data. So I'll first demonstrate what we need. You need data in this format. So again, two columns, and this is most likely readily available to you, especially if you want to create something like that. So you have your state and city. This could be state and city, department and employee, project and activity or whatever. And uh, you want to have them um, in, in like it's not enough if the state is only in the top cell it needs to be repeated all the way through so once this is there you just select this and insert a pivot table and set up the pivot table in this format so here uh, we just put state and city into the row label area and select the report layout of outline form i'll quickly show you how this will look in a blank sheet so that uh, you know the steps so we insert a pivot table go and drop city state and then city underneath that this will usually create a compact layout uh, but what we need is each in in its own column so we just go to the design and report layout outline form that will basically create that we also want to turn off any grand totals and subtotals just to be safe. You don't want to have any other things here. This is enough. So we now have all the things required for our next step. So the first step is get the data and make it a pivot table in outline format. The next step is once the data is in the outline format, you just want to create a simple formula that uh, using if condition, basically it will check these two cells if my um, state is not empty so j column j is state so if j27 is not equal to empty then i want the state value else that means i could be looking at individual city so if this is not empty that this is empty that means we are having a value in the other column it's also possible that we don't have anything in either column so um, we will then check if the column k is also not empty and if that's the case, then we will simply say uh, repeat five spaces. So rept formula is used to basically generate five spaces. So you don't have to use rept formula. You could put double quotes and just plus uh, space bar five times ampersand column K value. So this will essentially take the value from either J or K and turn it into this format where you have, if it is a state, it will be like this. If it is a, a city, it would uh, you know prefix five spaces and then we will get this what uh, we, we are going to do is just to be safe i'm dragging this down up to 50 cells so that we can get 
um, you know cover if there is more data items available now if you have more than 50 cities probably data validation is not the way to go for it because then your data validation drop down becomes too long and it's kind of useless anyway so this will work beautifully but you just have to be mindful how big this is and if you have more data either drag this down or uh, figure out another way of collecting the inputs so once this is all there uh, you can use uh, a dynamic um, named range kind of a formula to just exclude all the false values but uh, we don't need to do that especially with the newer versions of excel because i can directly use the filter formula and then i can say take that entire 50 cell range and filter anything that is not false so that will create this kind of a shorter dynamic uh, uh, it's like a array spill range uh, from the cell p27 okay so this is it that's the nuts and bolts once we have the p27 named uh, spill range i can directly make a data validation so i can go to a cell i can say data validation and then data validation list the list source would be uh, my p27 and then any spill range from there on so i'll say p27 hash which means look at p27 and if that has more items then get everything and then this will show me all the values and i can pick whatever i want and i'll be good how do we get the error message well uh, for that what i have done is i've used a simple if formula and just checked whether the left five items are space or not if so i'm giving a tick mark else i'm saying x mark and please pick the recipe and uh, by default this will be in red color and then using conditional formatting uh, i'm just saying uh, if the length of the cell is one that means it's a yellow green tick mark and the cell color should be green else it should be just uh, left as it is which will be red uh, but this conditional formatting thing is uh, just a, a cherry on the top you don't need that you can just live with this itself or uh, you can um, use a simple if formula to throw the warning message if needed and and leave it there let me uh, show you what happens when you have more data so for example i will add one more uh, item here uh, this will be in ohio and, and it will be data now the beauty of this is because we are doing this through pivot tables as soon as you enter this and you go and refresh the pivot the the city will go and it will sit in the alphabetical order within the state of ohio so it will change this which will in turn change that thing which will change this and now our data validation um, shall have uh, wherever that is Ohio as well with, with those options and I can pick data as well so that's uh, how it is done I'll show you one extra example this is um, and just so you, you can get some more inspiration on how you can use this uh, I will unhide uh, this so for example we only did this for one city but you could do this for for a whole range of cities and um, and you, instead of using a space you can use uh, some special characters to create a tree kind of structure so here um, instead of space what i did is i used the uh, symbol l um, and then um, like this so l and and a hyphen kind of a symbol you can get these symbols from insert symbol and uh, and then you can just select normal text box drawing and then you can use that uh, and that so i've used those and uh, i've created this um, so then what what that will do is it will show in my data validation a kind of like a tree structure so i can go and pick the item that i want and I can set it up over a whole big range rather than a single cell so for each cell it will do its own validation and it will have its own error message as well with conditional formatting so that is how you can create a simple two level data validation uh, with uh, pivot tables and filter formula now you might be thinking oh I I'll get all of this but I can't yet use filter formula either because you are you you are office 3 you're not on office 365 or you are on office 365 but you're not yet upgraded uh, to a version that supports filter formula in those cases what you could do is you can use one of the other formulas for example I would use 
uh, an index or an offset formula and first count how many items are there that are not false and uh, set up a dynamic range from there to here. Uh, because of this, because that technique is somewhat dated because of the availability of filter and other things, I'm not going to go into greater detail, but in the description, I will leave a link to uh, the article on my website that explains how to create such a dynamic named ranges through offset and index formulas. So please check that out. And if you have questions or doubts, leave a comment so that I can help you out. Again, if you want to have a copy of this workbook so that you can practice this idea, uh, just download it from the link in the description below and thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this two level data validation trick i will see you again in another video bye bye